officially start the meeting this morning. We start with the Pledge of Allegiance. Commissioner Bachelor, would you lead us? Thank you. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. We will start this morning with item B, approval of the regular session minutes from June 28, 2021. Board, you've received them in advance. Are there any deletions or corrections? None. Hearing none, call for a motion to approve. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Call the roll, please. Commissioner Painter? Yes. Commissioner Bachelor? Yes. Commissioner Corcoran? Yes. Item C, public participation. Do we have anyone here this morning who would like to address the board? Seeing none, we'll move on to item D, consent agenda. We have received this in advance as a board. Are there any deletions or corrections to the consent agenda this morning? No. Hearing none, I'll call for a motion to approve consent agenda. Motion to approve. Second. Second. Call the roll, please. Commissioner Bachelor. Yes. Commissioner Painter. Yes. Commissioner Corcoran. Yes. Item E, moving to consent non-consent agenda, item number four. Item number four is a recommendation of the Board of County Commissioners to adopt resolution number 112-21, resolving to approve payment to vendors in the total amount of $2,558,993.30 as set forth in the BCC approval invoice report for checks dated June 30, 2021, BCC directed prepaid invoices and the reports and procurement card transaction report as presented by the county auditor on june 28 2021 and further authorizing the county auditor to issue warrants for same pursuant to section 319.160 Ohio revised code do i have a motion to pay the bills so moved is there a second second any discussion Hearing none, call the roll, please. Commissioner Painter? Yes. Commissioner Bachelor? Yes. Commissioner Corcoran? Yes. Item number five. Good morning. Good morning, Jeremy Evans, Claremont County Engineer. So item five is recommendation uh, to execute record plat number 629-3280, being the replat of the lot in the following subdivision located in Union Township. This is the 12 Oaks subdivision, section 1A. Uh, so it would be a replat of lot 83 to create new lot numbers 17, 18, and 83A. Board, you've heard the recommendation to execute record plat number 629-3280, and this has to do with the 12 Oaks subdivision. Do I have a motion to approve? I'll make the motion. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, call the roll, please. Commissioner Bachelor. Yes. Commissioner Painter. Yes. Commissioner Corcoran. Yes. Item number six, Jeremy Evans. Item six is a recommendation uh, to execute record plat number 629-3281 for the replat of the lot in the following subdivi uh, subdivision located in Stone Lake Township. Uh, this is for the East Hill Preserve replat of lot 30 uh, to create a 25-foot ingress, egress, and utility easement across this lot 30. Board, you've heard the recommendation to execute record plat number 629-3281, and this is for the East Hill Preserve replat of lot number 30. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, call the roll, please. Commissioner Painter? Yes. Commissioner Bachelor? Yes. Commissioner Corcoran? Yes. Item number seven. Item seven uh, is a recommendation to adopt resolution number 113-21, uh, Resolving one, to establish and create the Miami Trails WES, which is Woods Estates and Sanctuary uh, Stormwater District, uh, to provide services related to the management of stormwater runoff in accordance with the general plan of drainage attached thereto as attachment A and made uh, part thereof, and two, to appoint myself as county engineer as director of the Miami Trails WES Stormwater District pursuant to the contract for engineering services uh, heretofore entered into uh, pursuant to and in compliance with section 315.14 of the higher revised code and three that the boundary for the miami trails wes stormwater district is defined as those parcels described in exhibit b attached thereto and made part thereof with the understanding that the aforestated services will only be provided within the said boundaries uh, identified therein pursuant to and in compliance with chapter 6117 of the ohio revised code and you'll remember we were here a few weeks ago to present uh, some information about 
this uh, proposed stormwater district. Uh, we have received no correspondence in favor or against since that time. I don't know if the board has received any. We have not received any correspondence. Board to further recommendation to adopt resolution number 113-21 for the general plan of dra drainage. This is Miami Trails WES Stormwater District and to appoint director of the Miami Trails um, contract for engineering services to um, Mr. Jeremy Evans, correct? All right. Do I have a motion to approve? I'll make the motion. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, call the roll, please. Commissioner Batchelor? Yes. Commissioner Painter? Yes. Commissioner Corcoran? Yes. Item number eight. Item number eight uh, is a recommendation to adopt resolution uh, number 114-21, uh, resolving to establish the stormwater utility fees and a cost allocation plan for the Miami Trails WES stormwater district uh, heretofore established and created to provide services related to the management of stormwater runoff in accordance with the general plan of drainage within the established boundaries, therefore, pursuant to and compliance with Chapter 6117 of the Ohio Revised Code, uh, with the aforesaid fees and plan uh, more fully described in attachments A and B, respectively, attached thereto and made part thereof, uh, and for which said fees and costs shall be charged to any and all property owners uh, in the Miami Trails WES Stormwater District, effective 7721. Uh, I believe the first uh, charge on the bill would, would uh, come about in September if this is approved. Board, you heard the recommendation to adopt resolution number 114-21, stormwater utilities fees and cost allocation plan for Miami Trails WES stormwater district, and this is part of the general, pl general plan of drainage. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, call the roll, please. Commissioner Painter? Yes. Commissioner Batchelor? Yes. Commissioner Corcoran? Yes. Thank you Thank very you. much. Item number nine. Morning, Lyle. Good morning. I'm Lyle Bloom, director with the Claremont County Water Resources Department. And item nine is a recommendation to accept the following grant of sewer easement with rights of reentry for repair and replacement that will be granted and conveyed to Claremont County for utility purposes of constructing, operating, maintaining, repairing, replacing, removing, or reinstalling sewer utility lines, pumping equipment, manholes, and all incidental fixtures required for the transportation of sewage in, on, under, and across the property of the grantor, and this is for project number 6402-60148 relative to the nine mile collection system improvements project located in Pierce Township, and further to authorize the county auditor to remit payment to the grantor in the amount as outlined and as indicated on the settlement sheet as compensation for the permanent easement and right of way. And this is the, the grantor for this is Valerie Machu, I'm, I'm going to butcher this, Machu Leonis uh, at 3598 Nine Mile, Nine Mile Tabasco Road. And this is one of five easements that we need uh, for this project. Thank you. Board, you've heard the recommendation. Um, this is to accept the following grant of sewer easement and with rights of reentry for repair and replacement. Mm -hmm. It's relative to that Nine Mile Collection System Improvements Project located in Pierce Township. And this is for project number 6402-60148. And as you stated the name, that's the property they're going on, right? We'll go on to <laughs> Valerie <laughs> Madalionis. Okay. Do I have a motion to approve, board? I'll make the motion. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, call the roll, please. Commissioner Batchelor? Yes. Commissioner Painter? Yes. Commissioner Corcoran? Yes. Thank you, Lyle. Thank you. Item number 10, Wade Krabowski. Good, Good morning. morning. Good morning. Wade. Morning. Agenda item number 10 is a recommendation for myself, Wade Grabowski, Director of Clement County Facilities Management Department, with the concurrence of Mr. Thomas J. Eigel, County Administrator, to approve the solicitation of request for statement of qualifications for the provision of architectural and engineering services in as it relates to the design work necessary for a new Claremont County Engineer Highway Operations Facility, Claremont County Fleet Maintenance Operations Facility, and an administrative building for the County Engineer and Facilities Management Operations. This will be located at 4435 State Route 222 and 4001 through 4009 Filiger Road, Batavia, pursuant to and in compliance with Section 15367 of the Ohio Revised Code in accordance with the scope of services identified in Exhibit A, attached thereto and made a part thereof, with said qualifications to be received until 12 noon local time on Thursday, July 29th, 2021, in the office of the Board of County Commissioners, 101 Main, Batavia. This notice will also be published in the Claremont Sun on Thursday, July 8th, 2021, and posted on the Claremont County's website. 
Board, you've heard the recommendation uh, to approve the solicitation of request for statement of qualifications. And this is for, uh, as it relates to the design work necessary for new Claremont County Engineer Highway Operations Facility, Claremont County Fleet Maintenance Operation Facility, and an administrative building for the County Engineer and Facilities Management Operations and the posting of when it will be displayed out for everyone to look at to apply for those qualifications. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, call the roll, please. Commissioner Painter? Yes. Commissioner Batchelor? Yes. Commissioner Corcoran? Yes. Item number 11, Wade? Yeah. I'll take this from Mr. Igel, if you don't mind. Uh, agenda item number 11 is a recommendation of Mr. Thomas J. Igel, County Administrator, to approve the solicitation of request for statement of qualifications for as, as needed architectural and engineering professional design services aimed at creating, reviewing, and approving the appropriate documents for submittal for building code compliance for general office remodeling, as well as as needed engineering services aimed at creating, reviewing, and approving the appropriate documents for submittal for bridge replacement projects, performing geotechnical services, soil borings, or construction materials testing and inspection. This will be pursuant to and in compliance with the Ohio Revised Code Section 15368. All interested firms may email their statement of quali qualifications to Mr. Thomas J. Eigel at T-E-I-G-E-L at ClaremontCountyOhio.gov, or they may submit one hardbound copy of their SOQ to Thomas J. Eigel, County Administrator, 101 Main, Batavia, Ohio, no later than 2 p.m. on Thursday, July 22nd, 2021. This notice will also be published in the Claremont Sun on Thursday, July 8th, 2021, and posted on the Claremont County's website. Board, you've heard the recommendation as read of, of Thomas J. Eigel for County Administrator to approve the solicitation of request for statement of qualifications, SOQ, and this is as described in this recommendation. Do I have a motion to approve? I'll make the motion. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Wade, qualifications and statements, these architectural services are going to be just a generalization? Yes. Yeah, typically, uh, typically what we did, as you know, is we do renovations throughout the year. Um, a lot of those need code compliance. We have to have an architect and an architect stamp. This year, uh, the decision was made to include the county engineer in that because they often have uh, a need for those engineering and architectural services for their bridge projects and some of the other projects that they have. So this will cover all of them. Okay. okay call for the roll, please. Commissioner Batchelor? Yes. Commissioner Painter? Yes. Commissioner Corcoran? Yes. And thank you. Thank you, Ray. Item number 12, Michael McNamara. Morning, Good morning. Commissioners. Good morning. Morning. Michael McNamara, Director of Community Economic Development. Uh, this is a recommendation of Thomas J. Eigel, County Administrator, to adopt resolution number 115-21, resolving to endorse the 2021 Comprehensive Economic Development Strategy prepared by the Ohio Valley Regional Development Commission and resolving to authorize the County of Claremont, uh, County, Ohio, to uh, participate in the Ohio Valley Regional Development Commission for fiscal year 2022 and to remit the sum of $39,221, which represents the participatory share of funding from the County of Claremont, Ohio, relative thereto on or after 1-1 uh, January 1st, 2020 and further resolving to support the Ohio Valley Regional Development Commission's Economic Development District Planning Partnership Investment Grant Program with the United States Department of Commerce Economic Development Administration for planning grants for the annual performance period January 1st, 2022 through uh, December 31st, 2022. Board Chair, the recommendation to adopt resolution number 115-21 and this is to participate in the Ohio Valley Regional Development Commission for fiscal year 2022 as it relates to the Economic Development District Planning Partnership Investment Grant Program. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. I would give the second on that one. Any further discussion? Call the roll, please. Commissioner Batchelor? Yes. Commissioner Corcoran? Yes. Commissioner Painter? Abstain. Item number 13. Thank you, yes. Michael. Good morning, Commissioners. Um, Good morning. I will read the um, motion, or the, and then I will introduce uh, Bruce, who is with us today for the discussion purposes. Great. So it's my recommendation, uh, Terry Brandenburg, HR Coordinator, with the concurrence of Thomas J. Eigel, County Administrator, to authorize Claremont County's participation in the County Commissioners Association of Ohio, CCAO, Workers' Compensation Group Retrospective Rating Program for policy number 313 -00001 for the period January 1st, 2022 through December 31st, 2022, and further 
further to authorize Claire B. Corcoran, President of the Board of County Commissioners, to execute the County Commissioners Association of Ohio Workers' Compensation Group Retrospective Rating Plan Agreement and U-153 Employer Statement for Group Retrospective Rating Program relative thereto pursuant to and in compliance with the terms and conditions set forth therein. So today I have Bruce Preston with us from Sedgwick who will just briefly explain what this means. <laughs> Thanks. Good morning. I think Good she morning. covered it all. I think she did. <laughs> Do I need to say anything? It's very nice to be here in clothing, uh, in person, for the first time in a very long time. I've worked with the county's program for a number of years, and every year we look at the programs available and help the county make the best decision. And that's a, a group effort uh, where we have the finance people crunch numbers, and Terry looks at it, and, and we come up with really what looks best for the county. County was in a pretty high risk program for a number of years. And in that program, you accepted a couple of hundred thousand dollars liability per claim. And you exposed yourself up to anywhere from one and a half to two times the total premium and costs. Group Retro became very attractive in 2015 and you went into that program. In this program, there's much less risk involved. You do not pay actual claims costs. You um, are in a group with other counties overseen by CCAO with our assistance. And depending on how the group performs, you can get rebates back. And for the years that you've been in it, there's a potential for risk, but the risk is about 15% of premium as opposed to 150% or 200% of premium. So much, much less risky program for the county. And you've gotten back about a third of your premium every year that you've participated. So it's been a very successful program for you. Great. Thank you, Bruce. Thanks. Board, you've heard the recommendation to authorize the Claremont County's participation in the County Commissioners Association of Ohio Workers' Compensation Group Retrospective Rating Program to execute the County Commissioners Association of Ohio Workers' Compensation Group Respective Rating Plan Agreement and U-153 Employer Statement of Group Retrospective Rating Program. Do I have a motion to approve? I will make the first motion on that this morning. Is there a second? I'll second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, call the roll, please. Commissioner Corcoran? Yes. Commissioner Batchelor? Yes. Commissioner Painter? Abstain. Yes. I said yes for you. Do you believe I did that? Sorry. Yeah. You believe I did it? <laughs> I said yes for him. <laughs> you liked it anyway, didn't you? I mean, Even though you had to abstain. You know, usually she's like, he'll have the jello. <laughs> <laughs> and you're not going to eat that pickle, are you? <laughs> Hi, Mary. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, item 14 is a recommendation to authorize the increase in the 2021 annual appropriation and general fund for juvenile courts retirement payout in the amount of $7,368. Board Chair, the recommendation to increase uh, the resolution to approve changes to the annual appropriation resolution. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, call the roll, please. Commissioner Painter. Yes. Commissioner Batchelor. Yes. Commissioner Corcoran. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. Any additions to the agenda under item F this morning? No, ma'am. Thank you. We'll move now to item G. We're going to move for a motion to go into executive session pursuant to section 121.22G1 and G3 of the Ohio Revised Code to number one, consider the compensation of a public employee or more public employees and number two, to confer with the prosecuting attorney, attorney concerning disputes involving the public body that are the subject of pending or imminent court action, respectively. Do I have a motion to go into executive session? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Call the roll, please. Commissioner Batchelor? Yes. Commissioner Painter? Yes. Commissioner Corcoran? Yes. We will return shortly. Thank you. We have returned from executive session. No decisions were made. At this time, are there any additions to the agenda, Mr. Eichel? Yes, I want the board to consider approval of a proposed Chapter 11 bankruptcy restructuring plan of Purdue Pharma, case number 19-23649. Board, uh, could I have a motion to add this to the agenda this morning? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, call the roll, please. Commissioner Batchelor? I'm sorry, Commissioner Painter? Yes. Commissioner Batchelor? Yes. Commissioner Corcoran? Yes. Mr. Fountain. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, good morning. Um, thank you. Yes, this add-on, uh, as Mr. Eigel indicated, relates to 
uh, the board's needed decision on a uh, motion whether or not to approve a Chapter 11 restructuring plan that was issued in a pending bankruptcy matter filed by Purdue Pharma as part of this national opiate litigation uh, going on. Um, the bankruptcy is going on in the Southern District of New York. We are uh, creditors in that bankruptcy. We filed a proof of claim in that action. And as part of that action, our bankruptcy counsel, along with many other uh, creditors' counsel uh, and the committee of, of attorneys and representatives involved in that, have negotiated a proposed restructuring plan um, that they are requesting our approval or rejection on each creditor. We'd be one of the creditors. Uh, in short summary, basically the plan uh, would provide for the restructuring of this company, uh, Purdue Pharma. Uh, they would be restructured into a company that is basically run uh, for specific uh, public interest purposes, and that's denunciated in the plan and the materials that they provided, which forwarded to the commissioners for review. Um, basically, the company would be run and, and overseen by various state, local, tribal governments. Uh, to make sure that they're running their company in conformance with this plan and these national objectives uh, and would, at, at the end of doing that, would wrap up the company and close it. Uh, it's anticipated, the guess at this point, is that the operation of this new restructured company and the closure of the company uh, would uh, garner about one to two billion dollars potentially in assets that would be distributed to various creditors and such of Purdue Pharma. Um, in addition to the restructuring of Purdue Pharma, as part of this plan, the Sackler family, uh, which owns Purdue Pharma, has agreed to chip in uh, funds. Uh, at this point, the proposed settlement amount is, uh, say, between another four to five billion dollars, but that's not set in stone. That may go, they're hoping that may go up, down based on their negotiations. Uh, but they figure that's a close floor on what they would contribute. So we're looking at, you know, five to seven billion dollars. Portion would be first distributed to private creditors, personal injury claimants uh, in the bankruptcy. Um, certain victims of various opiate abuse would get the money through various trust arrangements. The remaining money would go to governments, state governments, local governments, tribal governments, things like that. Um, that would go through a national trust and the fund the funds the funds would be distributed in accordance with a plan to go to various amounts distributed for states and the states would work to get those remaining funds distributed to local governments like Claremont County. So our local council and our, our bankruptcy council in the case is recommending um, that we would approve the plan. Um, their recommendation is shared by other council in the case. Uh, by the executive plaintiff's executive committee in the case. It's not unanimous. Uh, the recommendation to approve the plan is not unanimous among all parties, but it is our council's recommendation to us to approve the plan. So uh, I can answer any questions the, the commissioners may have on the basis for that recommendation or ultimately uh, our, our request is going to be to get uh, either the approval or the rejection of the plan from the commissioners and we will communicate that back to bankruptcy council. It's our recommendation. Um, with the concurrence of Mr. Eigel, that the Board of Commissioners vote to approve, based on our Council's recommendation, the Chapter 11 plan, uh, as it was disclosed and communicated to us, uh, and to authorize our office to then communicate and notify Bankruptcy Council of that approval, but we'll leave it to the Commissioners to make that decision. And Jason, just from this information, just, yeah, I, I know these numbers are not exact and mm -hmm. they are estimated costs. <clears throat> Claremont County settlement because of this actual restructuring just in rough numbers what's that estimated to be well i think right now they're saying they can only talk in percentages um i believe ohio's percentage was something like 4.3 percentage estimated that would come claremont county's percentage uh, in prior discussions with the state would be something like 1.9 something percent which is you know 1.9 percent of of the billions that would be come out. So a large sum, our council are cautioning, we can't give you a dollar value because we really don't know how it's going to be distributed at this point. But percentage wise, if you look at the total settlement value, we're at about 1.9% or so, or a little less of that. Okay. Now there are dis additional distributions for various municipalities and governments within Claremont County. So board at this, at this point, um, I am 
you've heard the recommendation of James A. Fountain, Assistant Prosecuting Attorney, attorney with the concurrence of Thomas J. Igle, County Administrator, um, for this board to approve of the proposed Chapter 11 bankruptcy restructuring plan as disclosed and communicated to the commissioners in bankruptcy case 19-23649 and to also authorize the prosecutor's office to notify the bankruptcy council to submit to the commissioner's vote of approval on behalf of the Claremont County in this case. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, call the roll, please. Commissioner Painter? Yes. Commissioner Batchelor? Yes. Commissioner Corcoran? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Fowler. Thank you. We'll make that communication. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any other additions today, Mr. Eigel? No, ma'am. Hearing none, any county staff or elected official discussions this morning? Ma'am. Hearing none. Members, any comments today? It was a very, very productive meeting. I mean, this, this lawsuit especially, you know, has been going on for quite some time. You know, it was a... Um, <clears throat> you know, it was it was a point of discussion when, you know, people came down to what actually caused the opiate epidemic and, you know, whether you wanted to enter into a suit with the distributors. And, um, you know, we chose to do that. And this is, um, you know, this is the start of the culmination of that, that process of, of moving forward. You know, um, as you can see, Purdue Farmers is one of the three big producers of opiates and, and, dis and distribution. And this is them obviously using the court system to try and, and come to some type of settlement that, you know, provides for the damage that was done, but also protects, you know, their family's assets. So, you know, you're going to see this in other forums of other companies also. Wish about to anything this morning? Well, before we close, just like to say a happy 4th of July and enjoy the Independence Day for once everyone gets to get out, let's hope. And with that, I will ask for a motion to adjourn this meeting. Do I have a motion to adjourn? I'll make the motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. And before we adjourn, I would just say, you know, every year <clears throat> we try to caution people about fireworks. You know, and we're right up against the 4th of July and understand that that is a dangerous proposition and be be safe you know don't hesitate to attend legal fireworks displays but when it comes to using your own you know refrain and and, and be safe from that you know someone in my neighborhood last night thought it was the fourth of july it went on for over an hour <laughs> so as you said you know if there's always someone you hear that is injured every year from yes. using fireworks. So. With that, call the roll, please. Commissioner Batchelor? Yes. Commissioner Painter? Yes. Commissioner Corcoran? Yes. Thank you, and we'll be back with you next Wednesday.